want to have a nice collection bucket, something that's going to be able to collect and be able to recycle that coolant when we're done. We'll put them over here. And if you were to look right up along the side of the radiator on the bottom left hand corner, you're going to see right on the corner there should be a little peck cock. It's like a little twisty knob. You would turn that to the left. And then, of course, as it turned to the left and started coming out, coolant will come out. It might make a mess, so of course be very careful. Now our pet clock is broken, but this is what it should look like right here. You would just grab this little nub, turn it counterclockwise, you can see it opening up, and at this point coolant will come out the side. If you were to look right down here, you're going to see a clamp. If you were to look at the other end where it connects on to the throttle body, you're going to see another clamp. You'd go ahead and loosen those up. Also, if you come right up here, you're going to see an 8 millimeter bolt. If you loosen that up, you can take this right out. Once you have that out of the way and the clamps are loosened, you can wiggle this around. I'm going to draw it off of the throttle body right here. And I'm going to come right there, take it off of right here, remove it from the vehicle. Next, we're going to remove the bolts right up here that hold this in. Let's use our little forky tool here, or you can use a screwdriver or whatever you've got. We're going to lift up on the center of these push tabs here, and then you should be able to take it right out of there. That's what it looks like. There's two on this side and two on the passenger side. Remove them all. Have all those out. Let's go ahead and get this off of here. The next thing we need to do is get the fan clutch off of here. You want to do that before you remove your serpentine belt because that's going to help keep the water pump from spinning. I'm going to carefully try to put a little bit of penetrant on there. Right along the area between the actual clutch itself and the pump. Let that sit for a second. Now we're going to need to use a 36 millimeter wrench of some sort. I have one that goes on my air chisel, but if you have a 36 millimeter wrench and a hammer, you could try to give it a couple light bonks and see if you can get it to break free. Once that breaks free, you can go ahead and spin it right off. Just be careful not to let it spin too freely because if it comes off, falls down, it could potentially damage your radiator. that right out of there. We're going to go ahead and get the serpentine belt off of here. To do that, you want to come right over here to your tensioner, pry this clockwise, and it'll relieve tension. Hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. that right off of here. Don't worry about that belt routing. You can find it located right here. We're going to remove our AC belt. Some people will say that you don't necessarily need to, but I would recommend it because coolant's going to be coming out and it could contaminate your belt. Twist that clockwise and remove the belt. Next we're going to remove this clamp right here. Just loosen it up enough to get the hose off of your thermostat housing. As you can tell, this clamp is in poor condition and it's not functioning well. It needs to be replaced. I'll just give this a little tug. Be careful because coolant could come out. Nice. Let's go ahead and remove that thermostat housing. Give it a little wiggle. Should break right free. Next is going to be time to remove your tensioner. You're going to notice that there's three 15 millimeter headed bolts. Remove them all and get the tensioner out of here. There we are. Now let's start removing some of these colon hoses. We've got this hose right here and then two more right down there. You can use pliers. You can use one of these nice clampy dues here. Put it on there, give this a little wiggle. If it doesn't want to break free, we're going to come through with a little pick and help it. Note, if you're using something like this, just pay attention to the fact that it is pointy. You don't want to poke any holes inside your hose. I'm just going to weasel it in between the water pump assembly and the hose itself. Once it starts to break free, we should be all set. There we are, set this aside. Now we'll just do the same to these ones. Now we're going to remove the mounting bolts for the water pump. There's going to be six. There's going to be three on the driver's side and then three over on the passenger side. Remove them all. 
just put this bolt in a couple threads to hold the water pump for us and we're going to remove the last bolt. Okay, at this point the water pump can move around. Let's go ahead and get that bolt out of there. And remove our water pump. There it is, friends. Now it's time to get the seals off of here. Usually you can grab right onto it, remove it, take a good look. Make sure that you get everything off of here. You definitely don't want to leave any of this crud on there. We'll do the same to the other one. Now for both of these areas, we need to make sure we clean up the surface where the gasket's going to ride. So just go ahead and take a razor blade or a nice scraper, whatever you've got, and just clean up the area. You want to make sure it's a nice smooth surface. If your water pump bolts are rusted or have debris on them, go ahead and clean them up with a wire wheel. The next thing you want to do when you're replacing any water pump is to make sure any of the mounting bolts don't go into the coolant jacket. You can do that by sticking a small screwdriver or whatever you have inside. If it stops, then that means it does not go in. If for some reason the screwdriver just kept going, more than likely that means it goes into the coolant jacket. Now we're just going to put the gaskets right on here. I like to start in all three bolts on each side and put the gaskets right on. Then when we come in, we're going to go right up against the engine and carefully start them in. Just be careful because the gaskets might want to fall out or even the bolts. Start that one in there a little bit. Start them all in before you start snugging any of them up. So now we're just going to snug up these bolts. We're not going to tighten them very much. We just want to bottom them out and then we'll torque them to manufacturer specifications. So we have all six of our bolts snugged up. We're going to go ahead and do our first pass torquing these down to 11 foot pounds. After we've torqued them all to 11, we're going to go ahead back around and do 22 foot pounds. Here we go, round two, 22 foot pounds. Now it's going to be time to get our thermostat in here. You definitely want to make sure that if you're not replacing the whole thermostat, you at least replace your gasket. Now we're going to take our thermostat and our housing. We're going to line up the gasket with this little air piton here. You can see it rattling around. That's going to line up right here. That's going to be the upper area, okay? So slide that right in. Make sure the gasket's sitting flush and it's not damaged in any way or curled. Grab your two bolts. Put this right down here. And it's going to shoot off right towards the passenger side there. We'll go ahead and start and bolt the bolts before we tighten any of them down. And then we'll snug them up and we'll torque them to 11 foot-pounds. Now it's going to be time to get our hoses on here. You're going to notice that this one towards the rear of the vehicle is smaller or thinner in diameter than this one. So we'll take the single hose and we'll put that one on the rear and then we'll take the one with the Y and we'll put that towards the front. You want to make sure that you still have a little bit of hose sticking out past the end there and you also want to kind of put the clamp pretty much back where you got it from on the hose itself. Give both hoses a nice tug. Make sure they cannot slide off. If they slide, you need to replace your clamps. Now it's time to get the hose on here. Just double check your clamp. Make sure it's in good condition. If it's not, go ahead and replace it. Put this all the way on there. Slide it all the way so it bottoms out and then snug up your clamp. Okay, give it a nice check. Make sure it can't spin around and it's definitely not sliding off. Now it's gonna be time to get the tensioner on there. If you were to look at the back side, you're gonna see that there's two bolt holes that are nice and deep like this, and then there's a shallow. If you're looking at the water pump, you're gonna see one bolt hole that comes way out like this. That's where the shallow bolt's gonna to go to, and then of course the longer bolts will go there. Line this up. Here's our bolts. You can see the long bolts and one short. Put the short one right where it belongs, down on the bottom, okay? Start it in, start in the other two, we'll snug them up, and then we're going to torque them to 37 foot-pounds. Okay, torque it to 37. Next, we're going to put on our AC belt. To do that, you're going to use your ratchet with a short extension. The AC belt down in here where it's going to go. It's going to go right around the crank into that inner pulley area, okay? Line it up, bring it around. We'll get that close to the AC, just like that. And I'm gonna see if I can get my extension in under here. Sometimes it can be difficult. If for some reason you can't, just go ahead and remove the belt a little bit, bring this down, and then put the belt over. Double check it, make sure it's sitting inside all the grooves on all the pulleys. 
this feels good. I'll get this out of there. Awesome. Go ahead and get our serpentine belt on here. To do that, I'm going to take the belt and I'm going to put it right around the crank just like this. I'm coming down along the passenger side of the water pump right here. At this point, I'm going to take one side and I'm going to go over the tensioner. I'm just going to leave it there for a second. Then I'll bring this other side down and underneath the power steering pump right here. And then up and over the alternator. You can see that it's nice and loose. That's because it needs to come underneath the idler. Before we do that, we're going to come right here and we're going to make sure that our tensioner is in the open position. Bring this down, grab this, put it right under. Perfect. Now it's going to be time to get the fan clutch onto the water pump. Don't use any thread locker or anything like that. You don't need to use any thread locker and you don't want to use any never sees. Just go ahead and go metal on metal. Turn this clockwise until it bottoms out. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now what, at this point, what I like to do is just give it a couple taps to tighten it. You don't want to continue tightening it to the point that it's going to be over tightened because you do of course need to get this off again someday. If you were going to torque it down, you would torque it to 41 foot pounds. And that's it. Let's go ahead and get this hose on there. Get our clamp. Slide it right down on there. There we are. Make sure you go ahead and tighten up that clamp so it's nice and snug. I'm going to turn it. Okay, that feels nice and tight. Give it a little wiggle. Make sure it's not going to come off. Let's go ahead and put this hose up into the little clamps where it belongs. Belt looks good. Let's go ahead and get our fan shroud back on here. Go ahead and lift up on that upper hose. Slide it down in. There we are. This looks good. We're going to line up down here. You're going to see you have a little piton and a hole. Line that up. It should sit right in. Do the same on the other side. There we are. So now we're going to take our push clips. Make sure that the center is pulled up. If it's pushed in, that means it's in the locked position. Go ahead and slide it in. Lock it in. Do the same to the other one. And then come right up top up here and start in your bolt. Now we'll do the same to the other side and then we'll snug this up. Get our air intake back on here. It's going to go right underneath this hose here. Line it up there. Grab this. Slide it in, push it all the way in so it's up against the whole throttle body. Make sure your clamps are nice and tight. Your hose over here should have a little clippy do. Ours is actually broken, but it's going to push in right there and that'll hold it secure. This cover back on here, just slide it all the way back so it's sitting inside the pitons. Put this down and tighten up your bolt. Real quick before we go too much further, let's go ahead and check that pet cock. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now it's going to be time to fill your cooling system. When you fill the cooling system, it's important to use the proper coolant. You'd want to use Dexcool. Dexcool is going to be kind of like a reddish, pinkish fluid. If you don't have access to Dexcool, you could also use a universal fluid, but you definitely don't want to use green. I'm going to use universal. That's what I have access to. I'm just going to fill this right up and then we'll run it for a little while. Here, you want to look for the full cold while the engine's cold. Once it heats up, of course, the coolant level is going to come up a little bit. But to start, we want it to be at full cold. We're going to run it for a little while and then we're going to double check just to make sure it's full. All right, so now that we've run it for a little while, everything's nice and hot. I'm just going to put this cap on and then we're gonna take it for a road test.